So I've had this laptop for nearly six years now and it is getting old. It's been dropped, dented and scratched more times than I can count, but miraculously it still works. It's definitely time for an upgrade though, but I'm poor, so instead of buying a brand new one, I'm just gonna customize this one with my Posca pens. Kia ora everyone, this is Hey Johanna. Welcome to the second video in which I customize my stuff with Posca pens. Today I'm gonna to be customizing my MacBook. If you wanna see the first video, I'll put a link to that up in the corner and in the description box below. Last time I did this, I went for more of a doodly kind of look, as you can see on my DS. But this time, I want to try a more psychedelic kind of style. I'm particularly inspired by a fellow Kiwi artist called Jenna Keel, who does a lot of murals around New Zealand. Her art is awesome and definitely worth a look, so I'll leave a link to her Instagram down below. So I'm just going to start out by taping up my laptop, sketching on it with my pencil, and then jumping right in with the Posca pens. I can't wait to do it, so let's get started. I just want to start out by saying that this project took me a long time. When I started editing this, I got to the time lapse part, imported all the clips, and there were 54 of them, totaling just under 10 hours of footage. So I've managed to speed that up a bit and cut out some of the more boring bits, but fair warning, this is a six minute time lapse. And it's like 7,000% speed as well. It's pretty much as quick as I can make it, any quicker and you wouldn't be able to tell what I'm doing. As I said at the beginning, I wanted a more psychedelic feel for this rather than the doodly style I went for with my DS. So I looked up some references, some inspiration, and I sketched out a little something on the laptop, but it just felt too plain. There was nothing in that sketch that was really me at all, and there was no indication that the laptop was mine, so I decided to add some elements which made it more personal, like the lollipop and the PlayStation controller, some art supplies, some food, the pony, I really love My Little Pony, and the uh, Cola Coca logo. I drink so much diet soda, and this may sound like a brag, but it's really not. It's so unhealthy. I drink an average of three or maybe four cans a day. So anyway, that is why that's there. The Posca pens, let's talk about them. They went down pretty well on the laptop surface, but once they were dry, they were really easy to scrape off. I had to remove my bangle as it was bumping across the surface and chipping the paint. Also, the Posca pens did not want to draw over themselves. The pen nib would just start scraping off the paint below, causing a flaky nightmare. So I had to be really, really careful of putting down a flat, even coat the first time around. I learned that pretty quickly. That's definitely a contributing factor as to why this took me 10 hours. A lot of that was scraping the paint off and trying to go over areas carefully and redo areas I'd covered up with other colors. Posca pens are really opaque, which is an extremely useful and wonderful quality, but by the 10th hour, I must have gone over all the black outlines at least, at least five times. Holly, what lesson did you learn today? Always work background to foreground, people. Don't suffer like I did. As you can see, I colored all of the elements first, like the lollipop and the pony and the cupcake, and then I went in into the background and this was just a disaster. This was mostly because I didn't plan. <laughs> Originally, I'd intended to leave the silver of the laptop showing through as a background because I was feeling lazy, but I decided that I wanted to color it in, so I had to carefully, carefully fill in the areas around the already drawn elements, trying not to go over the black lines. It was like some perverse coloring in challenge, except that the pens would occasionally just explode with paint when I wasn't expecting it. And if I tried to place my hand down on the surface to gain some traction, the entire painting would just yeet off the laptop onto my hand and arm. <sighs> It was fun though, 10 out of 10 would do it again. It ended up being really colorful and rainbowy, again, just like my DS did, and I wasn't thrilled about that, but I wasn't really disappointed either. It comes out looking really fun, and I've been watching a lot of My Little Pony lately, so maybe that's why I ended up so colorful and rainbowy. I've just been subtly influenced by that. One of the things I really like about My Little Pony is that I always feel calm and content when watching it. The colors in that show are just light and soft, and it just makes a happy atmosphere, so I guess I'm just hoping that when I look at my laptop, I get that same feeling. This pony that I'm drawing is Rarity. She's my favorite. This is a slightly embellished version of her, but in essence, it is the same pony. She's a designer and a bit of a drama queen, so I guess I can just relate to that a little too much. So anyway, here I am starting on some background elements. This was the part that was inspired by Gina Keel's work, but it did not come out looking like hers at all. Not that I'm unhappy, but I just think that the general vibe of the rest of the laptop wasn't quite right for the style that I was trying to emulate here, and that mixed with a lack of skill may have been why it came out so different. Again, it's not that I'm unhappy. Once I started on this part, the piece started coming together in my eyes. I was really uncertain whether I liked it up until about now when I decided that it was starting to look pretty cool. Not to mention I was already about six hours in by this point, I was not about to give up.
left side was a little bit weak and a bit boring. That weird stretched face isn't the best feature, so I decided to add some monstera leaves. You know, the big flat leaves with the holes that everyone likes. And this is when I realized I had to scrape off huge sections of the paint underneath for this to work. I cut out most of the scraping because, well, it's not that interesting to watch, but I painstakingly had to scrape away the paint using a teaspoon. It's funny how the paint was so happy to flake away when I didn't want it to. I held firm when I was trying to scratch it off. I could have used rubbing alcohol as I do later on to clean up the edges, but I thought for a section that big it would just be better to scratch it off. Anyway, those leaves turned out to be one of my favourite parts. They look so cool and I'm so pleased I went through the effort for them. So finally, I went around blocking in colour in the background and adding complementary colour on top in spots or stripes. I was getting a little bit lazy at this point and I was in no mood to go too detailed, especially for these small areas around the much more interesting elements of the piece. up by signing it off which is kind of a weird thing to do like it's my laptop it's not gonna be hung in some gallery or sold but that's just how I say to myself this piece is done you can step away now Holly otherwise I'd just keep working it forever so here's the final result this took me hours and hours and hours but I'm finally done and I'm thrilled with how it came out it turned out nothing like how I thought it would and it's not quite as you know psychedelic as I would have liked but it's still cool, it's still really bright and colourful and beautiful, so I'm really happy with it. Just like the DS, I sealed it with this Liquitex Gloss Varnish Spray, and I actually think I'm going to give it another coat after this to try and really make it shine and really seal in the Posca pen, because it's still kind of easy to scratch off, and I don't want all those hours to have been for nothing. Cheers for watching this video. Again, previous Posca pen time that's up in the corner, and Gina Keel's Instagram down below. Go check her out, she's infinitely better at this than I am. Kia ora everyone, have a wonderful evening and I'll see you next time. Bye!